Good morning, everyone. It's fantastic to see a nice crowd of people here um, on the next day of the Debian conference um, in Taiwan here in Taipei. We had uh, beautiful uh, days already here at the conference. We had a nice excursion and we are now here with full power again. And uh, Thomas Lange is here uh, in front of us. Um, showed already some good spirit when he came in here. So um, yeah, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, also thanks for joining us here online. And uh, Thomas, you are from Germany, yes. from Cologne. Yeah. Um, we had an interview many <laughs> years ago, yeah. which was big fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to hear more about FAI, fully automatic installation, and uh, the next steps that you're um, doing here with your project. So thanks for joining us and big round of applause for Thomas. Thank you very much for the int introduction. Today I want to read, uh, I want to talk about FIMI, which is a build server for creating installation and cloud images. So um, I'm a sysadmin for more than two and a half decades at the University of Cologne. I became a Debian developer a long time ago. And um, in 1999, I had to install a cluster of some very old computers, or in those days that were the very recent computers. Um, and I was thinking about doing something automatic because before I was using SunOS and there was a, uh, an automatic installer called Jumpstart and some ideas I put into FAI because there was no preceding at this time in Debian, so we invented the fully automatic installation for Debian. Um, I'm giving a lot of talks, they are all on FAI, and I also do some FI training for companies. So what was my motivation? A neighbor came to me and she said, oh, my Windows 10 PC is broken, can you fix it? And I tried to fix it, but it didn't work. But she was very open to say, oh, you can also install Linux on it. And then I said, oh, what, what will I do? Uh, how would I install Linux on her computer? And I was thinking, yeah, oh, I did this great tool FAI. Would this work for her? And I saw, oh no, the, the, the target audience of FAI was, uh, or is still, mainly the advanced system administrators. And also, I also looked at the Debian installer and I thought this is also not very easy uh, for beginners. So, and this was the motivation to look again uh, on FI and to see if I can make this much more easier for beginners. So, there are ideas. Let's create an installer which uh, should cover most installation. The Debian installer is very, very good uh, because he has a lot of very, um, very good features. You can do mostly everything with it. But uh, we could create an installer that is much easier if we only want to cover like 90 or 95 percent of our users, of our beginner users and advanced users still will use their tools and the configuration management. So just ignore the special cases. And I wanted to ask all the questions that the Debian is installer is asking uh, at the beginning, but also during the installation, I want to ask all questions in the very beginning. And then if we have all the information what the users want to install, we could create a customized installation image. Then we could boot this installation image. The installation would run fully unattended, and then the computer is ready. And there are three things that remind me, oh, creating some customized configuration, boot the media, go get a coffee, come back, and the computer is ready. This is what SPHI was made for. So. As I said, it's for experienced system admins. You have to adjust some um, config files, which are text files, but a normal user would never edit config files. So what I invented was now the FIMI service. And the FIMI service is a web service, and I'm not a web programmer. I hate web programming. So um, even I had the idea some time before uh, I started this when I was sick and laying in the bed for two weeks and I had good Wi-Fi in my bed. So that's, that's the time when I say, okay, let's do some web programming. So 
This is the web page. Uh, it's not on the fai.me domain, not yet. So it's on the, uh, it's a subdirectory or an URL of the phi-project.org web page. And as you see, we have, is this big enough? Or should I increase? Is this good? Okay. Uh, it describes you can create your, your own customized installation media. All data will be overwritten. So currently, this you cannot create an image which will preserve your Windows partition. So first, we ask for a username and a user password. If it's not set, we will generate one and show it to you. But I will just enter FAI. Then you can select your language. And during the DEPCAMP, I just added the Chinese, Hindi, and Japanese. This was very easy. This was like uh, five lines of configuration code. So it's very easy to extend this. So you can select a distribution. Currently, we have Stretch and Buster. And you can also enable the backports for Stretch. So it's very easy to say, oh, I want to install a machine with the backports kernel, just one click, and you will get this. You can select a desktop. I will select the XFCE desktop here. We ha have some collections of packages, which you can also enable. And you can also add your own package names. So uh, I will just type uh, this one and GIMP, so MC, the Midnight Commander, and maybe Moon Buggy. So there's an optional email address. If you put in the email address, you will receive an email with the configuration, but also you will be uh, get an information when your customized image is, uh, is was made, so it's ready. You do not need to use it. So and then you just say create installation image. What I'm doing is that I always. Um, configure the system with the 105 key PC keyboards because that's very common. The, the local time is set to UTC. So all these uh, very um, things, th there are a lot of things you can do with the keyboard configuration language. You can have very different combinations. But if somebody selects a German desktop, I, I say, oh, most people would like to have the German keyboard and uh, also, the time zone should be set to German, but uh, with UTC, it's fine for all. And I also have here the commands. This is not for a beginner, but uh, if you want to change the time zone and so on. So then you s just say, create my image. And now it's working. So what's working behind this? There's no job. So this is the first job. And then a computer reads the configuration. This is a summary of the configuration. And this web page is reloaded every 45 seconds or something like this. And when the creation of the installation image is finished, the web page changes. It will take about one minute and should be finished. So let's reload. Not finished yet. Maybe yet yeah, now. Let's see. Still not finished. Currently processed. Okay. You see. It has been finished in 65 seconds. There's a URL where you can download the ISO image. And you can also download uh, a log file. So when the image is created, we have to create a partial package mirror. And there's a command called file mirror. And you can download the log file. And the most important information I will tell a little bit more later is the file config space. You can also download it. So you, you have every information, the, the, the conf file configuration space, and, and the, at the very bottom you see the two commands that were used for creating this customized image. So you can re rebuild this customized image on your own. I do not download this now. 
because I prepared one image which I already have here and now I have a wrapper so I can um, call a KVM machine with some network settings and I say please uh, boot it says create a KVM machine with some network settings boot from CD and the ISO image is this one so let's see if this works full screen mode need some time so now this ISO image is booting up um, and currently the local disk which is just an empty disk is already partitioned you see there are some part add commands and mkfs x4 commands which are executed and now you see that locales and a lot of packages are installed and the pass is slash media slash mirror so the packages are inside the iso image so everything you need is on the iso image you could even do the installation without networking but since you want to have network later uh, when the desktop runs uh, i do the installation also with network so and this is now the fully unattended installation with the configuration uh, that we clicked on the web page. Um, what I will show you now is that I go back. So we, we added w a simple toggle. So in the beginning, the first version of this web page had a lot of more uh, questions, and this is the best. This is a toggle between some basic settings and somehow advanced. And in the advanced mode, you also will be asked for a root password. If you not supply this, sudo will be configured. You can upload your SSH public key for accessing the root account. Uh, you can enter your GitHub account. And then we just do a wget from the GitHub um, also to receive the public key. We have different disk partitioning schemes. You can say, oh, just, and this is like in the Debian installer, where you have just one partition or one partition using LVM or a separate home partition or a home partition using LVM. Uh, and this is, yeah, these are the, the three or four additional information you can enter if you toggle to the advanced settings. Um, so let's see. Any questions so far? Okay. So you see now the Linux image 4.17 is installed and this is the back Backports kernel. So we have a um, stable, Debian stable, but with the backports kernel that's currently installed. Um. So after all the packages are installed, there will be some customization scripts uh, executed, and I will point you to this later. Um, these are shell scripts that add a user, set the password, do some customization on, um, I guess, what do we have, etc, message of today, and so everything that, that you want to customize uh, can be done with shell scripts or if you have some different configuration management, it would be possible to add. So now you see executing Debian 40, Debian 30 interface, uh, executing demo 10 misc. These are the customization scripts. And then the installation is finished. We call the df command to see which um, uh, partitions are mounted. You see we have a slash target, slash target boot, and slash target home directory. Uh, slash target is the the mount point where we change root into it to install all the packages and we see the installation took 215 seconds and then the installation stops so this is not completely unattended but this is just for showing it it's very easy to set a flag uh, which then will not stop at the very end but just reboots the computer so I just type return 
we we already or we we again boot from ISO, but uh, no, the, the the boot order is look at the disk and then at the ISO. So uh, Debian was the user, FAI password. <coughs> I switch to full screen mode. How does this look over there? Yeah. Ah, yeah, I'm not sure if it's really the same. Can say it's the same. <laughs> okay. So you see, this is a XFCE desktop. Um, and as you see, uh, the configuration was the configuration using LVM and a separate home partition. We have the 4.70 kernel. Um, the Debian version. Oh, I created a buster thing. So uh, this Midnight Commander tool was uh, added uh, the moon buggy package is there, so yeah, and also GIMP was added. So very easy to just add your packages and to create a new machine. Uh, so we'll just stop, throw it away, going back to my slides. So what did we see? It's very easy to create an installation media which also works on USB stick. Uh, you just have, have to do some clicks on a web page. Uh, you can select certain things um, and the, like distribution, the desktops. Uh, we have different disk partitioning schemes. Um, you can add a public repository. Um, and now the same for cloud images. Now you, you saw an installation image. Uh, what we also can do is, and we go on this link, creating a disk image which can be used in a cloud environment, in a VMware, virtual box, KVM environment. There you can select uh, how big should the local disk be. We could say uh, five gigabyte, we can select different formats there. Uh, you can set the host name, um, the root password, I set it to, we'll set this to phi. Um, oops, we don't need this, a user password. Also set to phi, uh, US English, we will just use the stable distribution with the text console and maybe just MC and Moon Buggy. And I will now add my email address and then say create image. So this will not be the ISO image which runs the installation, but I will get the raw.z standard. So this is new type of compression, which, it, which is very, very nice, very fast. So it's very good for big files. And um, so we'll, this will last a little bit longer because we have not just to uh, collect all the packages and put the packages and the live system and the FI software and onto an e ISO, but we have to run the installation into a disk image. So while this is running, um, we have some more ideas what we could do with the FIME service. First, make it more dynamic. That was done during the mini DebConf in ha Hamburg, uh, thanks to Yuri who did this. So this needs some JavaScript uh, thing in the web page. And as I said, I'm not very good uh, in doing web programming. We could do create images for non-AMD64 architectures. This is very easy because Phi can build cross-architecture images. So it's mostly extending the uh, web page 
and maybe a few things in the tools that process the jobs, these web jobs. Uh, FI can also uh, install other distributions, so it would also be possible to create an Ubuntu installation image or a CentOS cloud image. Um, in the Debian cloud team, we already have some file configurations for the major um, cloud providers. So uh, currently I'm using the, f the default file configuration that are in the um, file package, but if we would use the configuration from the Debian cloud team, we could create ready-to-go images uh, for the cloud providers. Another idea is to create a, ge a generic image, so you do not need a customized image, but you could use a generic image that you boot, and in the very first beginning, it asks the job ID that you've created on the web page. So I tested it, so it, there's a proof of concept. You boot this generic image, it asks for the job ID, so just these uh, letters and uh, chars, and then the live image will receive the configuration and will download the packages just from a Debian mirror. This works al could also work very easily. Um, Phi could also create live images, so um, another idea is to, to extend this that somebody says, oh, I do not need an installation image, but a live image. So, and if you want to do more customization, then uh, this is the next step that you set up a Phi server by yourself and do everything in your, on your own Phi server. But Phi server does not mean this web service, but uh, Phi is normally using an, a Pixie boot network setup um, where you have a Phi server and the client insta ins installs a via network card, and that's what I mean, set up your own Phi server. So let's see. The, as you see, the, um, the disk or cloud image has been finished in 80 seconds. It's only 250 megabytes big, although I said the disk image of the machine that I want to boot is five gigabyte. This is because it's a spare file and most uh, bits are zero. I copy the link location, and now I try if the download is fast enough. Oh yeah, okay. This is the download. So again, here we see the log file. We could have a look at it. Uh, this is what normally is on the console. Uh, the file version, you see the file version. Then in file we have some classes defined. These are the like the Lego bricks that will be put together to have the whole configuration. And then some variables are defined. This is the part, then the disk will be partitioned. You see the part at and MKFS commands that are executed. And then again, a lot of packages are installed uh, and set up, configured. In the end, the customization scripts are executed and the log files will be written and so on. So, you have the, the log files of the run of your customized cloud image. And here's the command that was executed for creating it. So, the download's finished. Now I have to uncompress compress this image. And you will see it's very fast to extend the 250 megabytes to a 5 gigabyte file. And I will start it. Uh, and now, uh, the last call when I started the ISO image with the Phi KVM wrapper, I said Phi KVM CD. Now I say Phi KVM disk, and uh, so I have to distinguish between booting from CD and from disk. So boot the image, and as you see, there's no uh, booting up a kernel with the uh, Phi. Uh, thing, but that's it. The machine is running very, very fast. We can log in as Debian. The password is FAI. And you see just a plain 
uh, oh, I guess it's very hard, this white on black. I'm sorry for this. Uh, but the Midnight Commander, you see the mid Midnight Commander was installed. Uh, F10. And Moon Buggy is also on this machine. So this was very easy to create some customized uh, VM disk image. So how does FIMI work in the background? So first, what you see is the web server with the web page, but the web server is not the build server. So I have another machine, a virtual machine. Um, the, the web page uh, has some Perl CGI in the background that validates the input. So you cannot say, oh, please create a disk image uh, of 20 terabytes. No, this will not work. Uh, hopefully, I, I do some good programming. And then you, you, say, you see every job gets an identifier, and this is in the background a directory. Uh, so every job has a directory with the name of the job ID, and there we write a config and a meta file. And also a status file. So for example, if a lot of people are using this so service, you will see your job is waiting for processing because another job is currently running. And if the status changes, you will see, oh, your job process is now being processed or it's done or there was an error. Um, we have some, this is a one big shell script in the background that reads the directories and uh, looks if there are new jobs and if it has to deal with new jobs. And we have some additional scripts for parsing the logs error. We create, for example, if you want to create a buster image or installation image or a cloud image, every night a new buster NFS route is generated. So you really get the newest version of buster. And we have some monitoring and we clean up the old images. If you create one, you have like one to two days to download your image, otherwise it will be removed. Uh, <coughs> on, on this uh, server that is creating the images, we have three different configuration directories for FAI, uh, with, with, uh, which are using the name of the distribution because we need different NFS routes. This is something technical inside FAI, so for each distribution, another NFS route. The file configuration space is the same for all distributions. Even if we would install Ubuntu or provide Ubuntu images, we could use the same file configuration space. Uh, we can read if there's a new job. The directories between the web server and the build server are NFS mounted. We make a copy of the configuration space or of the default configuration space. Then we do some customization. That everything that you click on the web page will be added to the default config space. And then uh, we, we, we have two uh, different types. Uh, if you want to, do the, want to have an installation ISO, we first create the partitional package mirror and then create the installation ISO or we just create the disk or cloud image. There we do not need the partitional package mirror. Then we update the status, write the log files, and if the user provides an email, we send the email, oh, your job is ready, here's the configuration, and the ISO image will copy it back to the web server. And this is very fast because I love RAM. And uh, if I'm creating disk image, installation image, I always do this in slash TMP, which is a TMPFS. So I just throw them away. Very nice. So if you do a lot of things, put some RAM into your machine. So Phi needs an NFS root, a configuration space, and then the important thing, the Phi classes. As I said, um, it's like the Lego brick, bricks. And every class uh, it's just a name of a file or a directory, and they define, for example, the class home underscore LVM defines that the partitioning should be an LVM partition with a separate slash home partition. The GNOME class defines, oh, please install the GNOME desktop, a list of packages. Um, these are the, the commands that are used for creating it. <coughs> 
this is how the architecture looks if you do the network, if you have your own Phi install server and do the network installation. And on the left side, again, you see the, the main parts of FAI, the NFS route, which is the live system during the installation. You have the configuration space, which are just some simple text files, and you need access to the Debian mirror. And these three main parts will be put onto uh, the ISO image for the installation. So, uh, ev so normally, when you set up an ins installed server and have this network installation running, it's very easy to convert this installed server with the two commands into a bootable uh, ISO image. Uh, this is an example how the disk partitioning is look like. When we started with Phi, um, we thought, oh, it should be very easy for, for a sysadmin who knows how to edit files to create configuration files. And that was the reason why we would never, never, ever use XML. And <coughs> if you look at this, you will see, oh, this looks a little bit like an ETCFS type file. Yes, that was our intention. So we extended this a little bit, and <coughs> when you see like two or three examples, I'm pretty sure you could create your own configuration if you are a sysadmin. And at the bottom you see which types of file systems we support. We also support software rate configurations and crypt setups. <coughs> For the software installation, we have a different configuration file format. Um, we always use this uh, uh, a different um, subdirectory. This is a subdirectory package config, and there's a file called Debian, which is used if you use the Phi class Debian. And then you have this lines packages install no reg, which means use apt-get minus no re commands, uh, and then you just list the name of the the Debian packages. That's very easy. So. <coughs> Some references. Um, in the past, I was very, very bad in creating web pages. Uh, I think, like maybe six or seven years ago, I, I, oh no, maybe it's already ten years ago. Um, I, I redesigned <coughs> my file project web page, which has some graphical elements. Before, I only had text, a lot of text with a lot of links. <coughs> like the Debian web page currently. And um, I collected, uh, an, I, I have a FI questionnaire, and every time somebody says, oh, I'm using FAI, I say, oh, please fill out the FI questionnaire. And I started very early in asking, oh, could I use your logo? <clears throat> but it was only half a year ago when I started doing some web programming, web page again where I put all the logos that I collected over the years, and because I think it's, it's a very good advertisement to say these are companies that are using or that used FAI in the past. Uh, before it looks like this, I always showed a list of uh, companies, but this is much easier. Just, this is just a nice eye-catcher. <coughs> So, at the very bottom, you see the Grimmel project, which is a live CD for sysadmins, is also using FAI since uh, several years for automatic building daily ISO images. So, questions? <coughs> yeah, Max. Um, do you support uh, the in, uh, setup of uh, different BGFS sub-volumes in one BGFS <laughs> file system? Ah, <laughs> okay. Um, currently, we, we have a discussion about sub-volumes in ButterFS. I didn't implement the ButterFS support. And I know there were two or three people that said, oh, you're currently... I'm not sure what we support and what we do not support, but there's something with ButterFS sub-volumes um, that we currently not support. And if you are interested in, pl uh, please contact me. Um, I can point you to some mails. I think it's not that hard, but the only thing that we, that we need, and I'm not sure how to decide it, 
how to support it? Or uh, do we want to be very, very flexible? Or would it be really easy to say this sort of sub-volumes we support and that's fine for most of the people? So then there's an ongoing discussion and I'm, I think currently we support some sub-volumes but not what a lot of people like to have. Thomas. Yes, uh, so there's a few remarks that I made to you about the yeah. cloud image. Uh, like I should may maybe mention it for the others. Yeah. Like uh, Let's go. your web page shows uh, how to customize the SSH key, root password, and user. These are all things that are uh, normally configured by cloud in it. Yeah. Do you intend <coughs> to remove that later, or what, what are you going to do with it? Um, I would guess, I would like to, to distinguish between the cloud image for the cloud providers, but still have the, the option that you can say, I want to use this disk image just in a local VMware virtual box machine. So maybe the, the also with the host name. But uh, then that's not a cloud image. Yeah. So, so we, we, we just have to distinguish there's an installation image, a disk image for a VM, and a cloud image. And uh, you're completely right that cloud image, all people will use cloud image, and then some options that we have on the web page has to be removed. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe we, we can have a toggle, use cloud image, or do not use cloud image, and then you get different that, things. That was my uh, other question. Like, yeah. uh, you never mentioned cloud in it, and uh, I, by seeing the page here, I see disk image formats. I don't see cloud provider type, meaning that there is no way to configure, for example, the data source list of cloud in it. Probably that's desirable to have that, and also to have uh, the different agents uh, <coughs> in the image as well. The, the, the different ag agents could be added here, with just with the packages, but you're completely right. Uh, this is the, the part where I use the word cloud for some advertising because it's very catchy, but you're right, these are not really ready to go cloud image for the main cloud providers. And like, do you also add things like uh, PCI hot plug uh, configuration, block device hot plug and, and such things, or it's N not yet N there N yet? I would guess the kernel would care about No, this. you do need to configure it. If you ah, okay. know, you need to load the modules. So it needs to go in etc mode probe.d or something. OK. I, I didn't know that, that there are some special configuration needed for PCI hot just plug. It's like, uh, otherwise, you just plug a block device with the whatever cloud command, and then the VM mm -hmm. doesn't see it. OK. So I'm pretty sure that for, for having a ready-to-go cloud image, we, there's still some work to do. And, and, and I hope I could just copy this from the Debian cloud team configuration. Hi. Hi. Uh, so two questions for you. Yeah. Uh, I'll go. Uh, so you mentioned CentOS. Is that something that you are doing right now, or that's an aspiration? No, I'm, I can do this. You can do CentOS? Yeah, I did it okay. on my own several times. OK, great. Um, the second question is uh, about a user scenario I wonder if you're thinking about. So for many people who build custom images, um, for updates, they also want to be able to control the, pa the sets of packages that get installed onto the machine. Um, I think you mentioned that during th when creating the installation image, you create a, a package repository. Yeah. Okay. So I wonder if that's um, so. The the scenario I imagine is if that package repository gets saved, and then someone can repeat the build of the installation over time, then the updates will get into that repository and then be able to get onto the user system. So yeah. I don't know if that's a scenario <coughs> so you have considered. So for the installation image, mm -hmm. as you see, you can add one public repository here. Mm -hmm. So And when you add the URL of the repository and create your installation image, 
uh, I will download this package from this local repository and put it on the ISO, on the installation ISO. Right. I hope I did it right that I also configure sources.list correctly that this URL will also go into the installed system. And then you can do normal upgrades. Okay. Is this... Yeah, I think that's what, <laughs> yeah. what we're looking for. So the, a scenario that's very common for, uh, so I'm from Microsoft and we see often yeah. uh, for Azure, <coughs> for customers, um, when they are deploying updates to their machines, it's very painful for them. They don't want to do unattended updates because some no. patch might get on that breaks their application. Yeah. Um, so they want to have control over which packages. Yeah. So if, if the packages can get put into a repository that they can test, um, before making that available for their um, end machines. Yeah. Um, that would be a very so, so, so if I will put the package onto the ISO image, but after the installation, there will be only the entry in the sources list remain because the, the package was installed and it, it will be not be copied onto the machine. I guess there's no need for it Yeah. after the installation. And, and how you do the upgrades, if you use unattended upgrades or have a cron job or whatever, this, this can easily be configured and there's nothing that Fi says you have to do it in this way. Right, okay. So I'm thinking of a slightly, an, a scenario that extends beyond that, but I'll talk with you later. Yeah, okay. <coughs> uh, is it also possible from uh, the web interface to add the uh, manual configuration to added packages. For example, if I add uh, unattended uh, upgrades, can I also add a configuration file? No, currently it's not possible to add configuration files to this web interface. Uh, I guess you should set up your own FI server and then you can do everything in, in the FI config space. So then the web interface is really or mostly for the beginners that don't want to add their configurations but just want to say, oh, uh, unattended installation with some customization is very nice. It's much easier than writing a DI preceding file, so I just click and have an installation media. But this is very easy. If you set up your own file server, you can put all the configuration files and they can... We have a command called fcopy, so, which knows about the file classes and if you have different templates of a configuration that should be used for different file classes, for example, you have a file class department A, department B, or location C and location D, then it's very easy to put all the templates into a directory and fcopy will know which class to use and copy the correct um, configuration file into the target directory. <clears throat> so, we still have, yeah. Okay, okay so, um, yeah, I also have a question uh, about that. So, you can set up your own FI server, but uh, on your GitHub repository, there are no uh, license uh, uh, files. So, I, I don't know, um, yeah, I, I think you forgot to add them. So, we don't actually know what is the license of the project uh, on your GitHub repositories? No, uh, since the, the five packages are in Debian, you know that's an open source license. And there's, there's a readme file, uh, and the readme file also says that this, this is GPL2+. Plus. Yeah. So oh, the whole file software. The website software. itself? Uh, the website uh, itself and the background script is not yet open source. So if anyone is interested in it, uh, come to me and we will see how to. Yeah. So at uh, Force Asia, we have a, um, like a project that is related where um, like we have a lot of events and we want like, <coughs> just like a, a, um, some configurations like no screen server, no uh, desktop uh, uh, notifications, things like that. So mm. um, we also wrote a, a small script uh, like to set up uh, um, like okay. event computers like that, so um, I think it would be an overlap, but, but like, so I wasn't sure like uh, how, how could that uh, align, maybe we can um, talk about this um, in, in detail more. And uh, yeah, like basically it would be great to have more options to, for additional configurations for these kind of things. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, and also like um, headless clients, so I think like with the cloud is very uh, interesting, but like uh, as we are moving also to like 
headless client, like let's say uh, there's Google Home, there's Alexa Echo, but we also see a number of um, um, like free software projects that uh, work on um, like these kind of, of, of boxes that don't have a user interface. Um, maybe we can also put in options like that into Fi. Um, again, which options do like, we Like, you need? know, like the Google uh, Home or Alexa Echo uh, um, ah. like, uh, devices. For, for, so for I, I the embedded devices, sure. Yeah, it, yeah. it would be very nice to, and uh, Rico will talk after my talk about FAI using on, on embedded, on ARM devices. Uh, we could create um, or extend this service to say create an image for a Raspbian Pi uh, with some very easy customizations. Yeah, so we can do a lot of things using FAI. And more question: Should I create another image, or are you already using the service? And maybe I didn't get it. That my service is currently overloaded. <laughs> so if uh, if there are no questions, oh. Another question. <laughs> okay, since you mentioned Im uh, creating embedded images, have you had a look at how um, FAI compares to, um, there's another group that's working on something called Debi, which uses Debian packages with Yocto. So for embedded image creation, how would um, how would FAI compare to what Yocto is? <coughs> so the most important difference to Bitbake, Yocto, and all the other tools in the embedded field is that they often compile or build the packages from scratch because they want to have some certain compile options or remove things. Debian starts at the package level, so I do not care about uh, building the kernel from scratch or whatever. Debian is just doing the normal debootstrap stuff or for embedded devices first create a DD image, loopback device, <coughs> and then adding packages to it and customizing it. And in the embedded world, a lot of tools um, recompile everything and collect the licenses. So that's the main difference. I, and I start from the level of packages. Okay, and so the image uh, the image types that could be supported and the, or the different board support um, packages, all of those could be, uh, support for all of those could be? Yeah, sure. Then, then if, if there's an official package repository, which I can use and just change root into uh, my, my empty disk image and call the, the package installation step, that can be done. Also cross-architecture, that's very nice. Oh, and you you will support cross architecture. Uh, it's still it, it's working since uh, no maybe a year or half a year for for and not only for ARM sixty four. Okay, Rico says works. Okay, it it works, it works like this. Uh, okay, thank you. So, how much time do we have? Two minutes. Any more question? Okay, if not, thank you very much and stay here to her uh, and listen at Rico's talk about FAI and ARM um, architecture. <laughs>